it has been a little bit. Hi guys! So now I guess my real reaction videos are back. <laughs> As you might be able to tell, I am back in college after a much, much needed winter break. And I am, of course, back today to react to the premiere of Riverdale season 5. This has been widely requested and I hope that you enjoy this. I'm sorry I couldn't do this closer to when the episode actually came out. Um, I've been quite busy and this is as soon as I could, um, as I could watch it. So just thank you so much for your patience and let's get into this. <laughs> now if you just clicked on this video randomly and if you are new to this channel I must warn you I really 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 hate Riverdale. If you like it it's fine we can all like what we like we all have our own tastes but for me personally as somebody who grew up reading the Archie comics I cannot bring myself to like a show that portrays its source material so badly. So I'm just saying if you love Riverdale if you cherish it if you will defend it to the ends of the earth, maybe this isn't the video or channel for you. I'm just telling you that right now. Before we get started really quick, I just want to make it very clear that I don't plan to do this on every single episode of season five. I will likely do it every two, three, or four episodes of season five. I will try my best to react to the most significant ones, um, the most Betty and Archie heavy ones. <laughs> I don't know what to expect from this season or this episode. I have said this before, but I have little to zero faith that the writers of this show will essentially do what they said they were gonna do. <laughs> if they flake out on us, then it won't be the first time. And I've been essentially programmed not to expect a lot. Without further ado, let's get started. Hey, did you reach out to Mr. Honey? We did. He's fine. Oh, it's the auteur again. Seems like they've moved on from recreating a killing to reenacting a metaphoric murder. Us and our friends getting Mr. Honey fired. And there is one other thing. I wrote a story called Killing Mr. Honey with... Okay, okay. I'm already confused. <laughs> Not surprised. <laughs> Not surprised, right? Killing Mr. Honey, I know that it was just a story. Jughead wrote it as a story and he only shared it with Betty to my knowledge. So how would somebody know to recreate them all killing Mr. Honey? Because nobody read his story and it was just in the story. It's not like they actually did that to him. So I'm already confused. I'm already confused. Mm. What else is new, right? With this show? Who else knew about that story? Just us? Yeah. And me and Betty. That's just what I said. That's exactly what I just said. <laughs> Oh, uh, I must be psychic. Stubs have the letters B and V on them. The hell? Like Betty and Veronica? No, Blue Velvet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I, as somebody who grew up reading these comics, that's exactly what I first thought too. When it says BV, I was like, BV? Like Betty and Veronica? <laughs> I guess Betty and I are kindred spirits. Dude, that video store and that Crypt Keeper David. If he's not the auteur, he's connected to the auteur somehow. Or at least he's a fan. We'll bring him in. Early morning runner chickens. I got my physical for the Naval Academy this week. You could always serve your country in the USO. What are you talking about? Just this new song you've written. Oh. She found the song. And she still can't talk normally. <laughs> right now my focus is on impressing the commandant. And you will. Because I'll be there to make sure of it. What's that supposed to mean? It's daddy. Daddy! I'm so ready for these two to be done. Like, I, I'm so ready for it. I have news. Please don't tell me you and mom are chaperoning to prom. We are, but no. Uh, my news is that, according to my doctor, my core strength is building back up. What are you saying, daddy? I'm beating it. I'm beating the stamp disease. <laughs> I've been trying this new workout regimen that seems to be helping. <laughs> This show is literally never going to redeem Hiram, and I, I don't think he deserves it. I don't think this Hiram deserves redemption. He's done too many horrible things. But they keep, like, thinking that they might, and then takes, like, steps back, you know? And I hate that. I just make a decision, please. But I liked how he said, I'm beating it. 
I think I'm really beating the disease. Like he's like a superhero or something. Thank you, Doctor. TTFN. <laughs> TTFN? <laughs> oh, it seems to be true. Well, this calls for celebration. Oh, duh. Does it? Really? Cheers. No, these three are good. He's not talking. Unless you count movie quotes. Well, what did he have to say about <laughs> his store's initials? Where's your partner in crime? She's following up on another lead. You mean our sister? Where's your partner in crime? And girlfriend? And our sister? Things haven't changed much, I see. Mr. Weatherby, Weatherby. you're back. Indeed. Just in time for senior prom and graduation. The bee is back. Well, besides, when it seemed like you were no longer interested in the academy, I started looking at other candidates to appoint. There's someone else you're considering, sir? Yes, a young man from Queens who's been training rigorously for the academy. He's also a boxer like I was. And as you know, we have a proud boxing tradition in the Navy. I'm looking for a champion. This man here is overacting a lot. <laughs> He's like, well, you know, there's somebody from Queens. It's very... Very important in the Navy. Really intense looking around. I feel like a huge problem with this show is that most of them like act like they're on a stage, like they stage act. So they like really over enunciate and like move their heads like really dramatically and just talk in a really dramatic way. Like they don't act like they're on screen, they act like they're on stage. And when you're on screen, you, you're supposed to act more naturally because you're the camera's like right up close to your face and they can catch all the little things. Whereas on a stage, you might not. Yeah, I think that that's always been kind of a huge problem with this show. I forgot to say this, but I didn't mean those comments to be insulting to the actors in any way. I'm almost positive that it's a writer-director thing. If you're considering Archie and someone else, how about deciding it with an exhibition bout? Right here at the El Royale. I do like his voice. I'll have my office reach out to K.O. Kelly, see how quickly he can hop a train to Riverdale. Wait a minute. K.O. Kelly is your other candidate? He's only dating one of my BFFs, Katie Keene. <sighs> what is the odds? Our momentous blessed day is almost upon us, TT. Can I ask, why do you want to be prom queen so badly? Oh my gosh, okay. She's gonna get into a whole spiel about this in a second, which I can't wait to see, but she still can't talk normally either. She said one line and I have no idea what she just said. Does Elizabeth want to be the queen of England? A better question is, why don't you want to be prom queen? Listen, if it's important to you, it's important to me. Like always, if it's important to Cheryl, it's important to Tony too. Because Tony doesn't know how to think for herself anymore. But the only royalty I care about is being Serpent Queen, which I will be, again. I thought she already was. See. Is this where I sign up to run for prom person? Oh no, Kev, I don't think you want to do that. Uh, yeah, no, I don't, actually, but Fangs has always wanted to be prom king, so here we are. Wow. I hate to wait on Fangs' parade, but Tony and I are campaigning to be co-queens, and it has been my destiny to wear that prom crown since birth. I have spent my entire life fantasizing about being prom queen, and a part of that fantasy is that I exist in a world where everyone wants me to be prom queen, and certainly not themselves. Does that make sense? Thank you, Kevin. As my friend, I knew you'd understand. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. I cannot comprehend the idea of somebody liking her. Like, I can't. If you like Cheryl, please tell me why. <laughs> I already talked a bunch about this in my Cheryl analysis video, which I will link right up there, but she really is, for lack of a better term, a bitch. <laughs> if it's really your destiny to be prom queen and somebody else also wants to run, let them run. If it's your destiny, you're gonna win. And if it's not, you're not. So newsflash, Cheryl, you can't control what other people want. And you certainly can't deny somebody else's rights of running for prom court or anything else. Gosh. Kato Kelly! Running! <laughs> Hi! Hey. Welcome to Riverdale. So this would probably be a lot more exciting if I watched Katie Keene, which I don't. I don't watch Katie Keene, so if you do, this is probably a lot more exciting for you. <laughs> Archie has graciously agreed to have you stay with him and train at his gym. 
I'm heading there now if you need a ride. How could somebody say that Archie is selfish and mean? He's so nice. Like, he doesn't even know this guy. My gosh. I don't understand how people can, can like, Cheryl and Veronica, who have done such horrible, sketchy things, and, and then hate Archie, who's just a normal teenager. Well, well, I never thought I'd see you two again. It brings you around these parts. Now, the owner, David, keeps coming up in an ongoing investigation that we're conducting, but he's not talking to us. We need a way in. What if he's not talking? Why should I? See, I happen to have a friend in there with you. His name is War Baby. Mm -hmm. Do you know who he hates more than anyone? Preppies. Some of David's customers prefer shared experiences. If we wanted to attend one of these screenings, what would we need to do? You'd have to be on a list. Or you'd have to prove to David that you're the real deal. Jughead's friend is named War Baby? But for real, that scene just reinforces how disappointing it is that Betty and Jughead's characters are just not what they are in the comics. They're so serious. All the time! I know that that's just kind of random, but it just makes me sad. You got a mean left hook on you, Kale. Uh, thanks. A bunch of bags since I was a baby. <laughs> when it comes to brute power, We'll see who's stronger, the heavyweight heartbreaker or the red hope. Yeah, we will. And tomorrow your ass is grass. <laughs> but tonight Ronnie wants us to show you a good time, so we're going to her speakeasy. Her what? <laughs> <laughs> me too! <laughs> Dude, I already forgot his name, but me too. Like, 17 or 18 year old girls, speakeasy. Her what? <laughs> no. I won't help you. No, no, Cheryl, it's not an actual snuff film. It's an act. It's a way to get closer to the auteur, the person who's been creating those reenactment videos. Okay, but I'll need a wig. I don't want anyone to recognize me by my signature with me. Okay. Okay, but who in their right mind would even work with Cheryl? She'd, she'd try to take over the whole operation. Whether you like her or don't like her, you can't deny that. She would totally try to take over. And she would totally not want anybody telling her what to do, even though as an actor in a film, that's exactly what you have to have done to you. Well, how do I look? <laughs> oh my god, you look incredible. What about me? Terrifying, Reg. Reg. What happens next? Yes. Now, Reggie is going to kill you in the most brutally exploitative way imaginable, and I am going to film the hell out of it. <laughs> Okay, we are 14 minutes into this episode, and they're already making a fake snuff film. <laughs> but say it with me now. It's Riverdale. But honestly though, Cheryl has that outfit on and still has the same face, so does she really think that people are gonna be like, oh, who's that if she just has a wig on? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't really understand the TV show. Is everyone having a good time tonight? No. I thought I'd share a little tune for you tonight. It was written by someone very special to me. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, she's gonna sing the song. <laughs> oh, I'm already feeling the secondhand embarrassment. This one's for you, Archie Kins. He's not made for this world, and neither am I. And maybe in reaching this place and a feeling, so give me tonight. Kao, please tell Katie that I'm sorry she's not going to be here when my boyfriend beats up her boyfriend. I'll let her know. My boyfriend beats up her boyfriend. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. My boyfriend is like so much better and stronger than your boyfriend because he can beat him up. Oh my god. Good night. Good. Wait. Yeah. I love you. I love you too. I do feel bad for her. I do, but. I'd like us to host a din din before the dance. I'm down. Who should we invite? Mm, the big sense, Kevin, Bang. I was thinking our families. 
Specifically yours, my love. I don't think they can handle some big gay prom dinner party. What happens when I meet them at graduation? Do I just pretend like you're not my girlfriend? Honestly, that's probably a good idea. I wish that they would have uh, Madeline, Madeline Petch do more emotional, dramatic acting. Because watching this show, I would think that she's, like, not capable of acting. Like, I would think that she was a bad actress. But I saw her audition tape for prom, and it was great! I wish that they had more of that, and I feel like they did, like, earlier on in the series. But still, it wasn't totally authentic, because it's always been kind of a campy show. Which I get, you know, it's a comic book. It's supposed to be kind of a campy show. But still, I wish that, I wish that she was given the opportunity to to really show what she can do. And same with all of these actors. I really feel bad for all of them because I, I do feel like they are more talented than this show makes them look. What made you seek out the Naval Academy? The Academy feels like it could be a good place to start over. Completely. Uh, not completely. You and Ronnie are in it to win it, Katie says. I don't know, bro. Sometimes I worry that I'm holding her back, you know? I feel you. But that is for the ladies to decide, not lugs like us. We lucked out. What a nice boy. I don't know him, but it's a mighty fine young man. I feel like I'm a mom judging on who my daughter's taking on her first date right now. We have a favor to ask. We are trying to sell a snuff film to this video store, but... I can't go in there because the owner is going to recognize me from the time I ran at the place with the FBI. Do you have me at Snuff Film? That... <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't sing. It reminded me so much of Glee. The... Here, I'll see if I can play it again. I need to talk to you about something, Nana. And I'm really hoping that you'll keep an open mind. When were you going to tell me that you were dating a Blossom? Nana, it's not what you think. Cheryl isn't what you think. That family over the decades has taken everything from us and from our people. That's ancient history. And I promise you, Cheryl is nothing like her family. I will not allow you to date a Blossom. I'm sorry, but this lady has a huge head. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That was really, really insensitive of me. But wow, this is huge. It's not that she's dating a girl, it's that she's dating a Blossom. I like it. This is interesting. This is like one of the first interesting things that Cheryl and Tony have been a part of in a long time. This snuff is a fake. We were worried that this tape might not be authentic, so I brought a backup that I know for a fact is the real deal. I'm making this movie so we never forget what your daddy sacrificed for us. Not you do this. Love your daddy. The Black Hood is a little boy. Is that really him? This is insane. Could I screen this at a little film festival slash rave I'm organizing? What? As long as we're invited to the screening. <laughs> Must do better. This is insane. This is insane. Oh, here we go. We got your daddy's movie playing in room 317. What did Betty tell her mom and FP when she said she was going out? She said like, oh yeah, no, I'm going to a rave uh, or party, whatever, where they show snuff films to people. Um, it's on the wrong side of town, so I might get really hurt. I cannot wait for Betty to date Archie and for her to be her happy self again. I really hope that that will happen. <laughs> Kevin and Reggie are shook. <laughs> These are all the old toys from it. He's gotta be in here. Do you know who the director of this is? Do you know who the director of this is? Are you the director? Hey! Oh no, it's just I'm such a big fan. This show got real weird after season one. Judge, the Commandant, has scored the fight in favor of K.O. Kelly, your winner tonight. I mean... Hell of a fighter, Archie. I'll tell you what. 
Why don't we stay in touch and come fall? You reapply to the academy. We'll see if we can't make it happen for you. And I'm not applying to your school again. Well, that was pretty poor sportsmanship. Somebody had to win, just wasn't Archie. I know that's a big deal. I know it sucks, but could have been more respectful. I thought you didn't want me to meet your Nana because I'm a lesbian. But surprise, it's me and my family she hates with a fiery vengeance. Cheryl, you have to admit that your ancestors were horrible to mine. And now, my Nana is begging me not to go to prom with you. She says that it would dishonor our family. Okay, this is actually making Cheryl and Tony interesting again. I know that it's Riverdale and I know that it's dumb, but they have feuding families and it's romantic. It makes them more romantic. I'm sorry about the fight. The Naval Academy wasn't your only option. Yeah, it kind of was, Ronnie. Hey, do you want to blow off prom? We could do something. Anything you want, just the two of us. This will be the last dance we have with our friends. Can't miss it. When are they actually going to go to prom? There's only 13 minutes left in the episode. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Looking sharp, Archie. Thank you, sir. Well, look, um, if you decide to stay in Riverdale, Archie, just so happens I'm in need of a deputy mayor. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Did I mention no? If Archie works for Hiram again, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. <laughs> well, Archie Kins, what do you think? I think you should stop calling him Archie Kins. This is a memory you are going to treasure forever. Smile and say end game. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I wish that everybody would stop saying end game. Especially Molly Ringwald. Show some respect. She looks gorgeous. Betty Cooper, you can take my breath away. Okay, guys, it's your time. Smile. I love this song. My gosh, it's like, she's all that. I feel like it, it would not be a Riverdale prom if Reggie didn't spike the punch. So that was good. That was good. Happy prom night, mother. I'm going to defer Barnard for you so you and I can work together side by side. Ronnie, I've been dragging you down. I don't want that. I'd rather lose one meaningless year than be out of sync with you maybe forever. And there it is. She just said herself that she does not have enough faith in their relationship to do long distance for a year. And because she thinks that it might put them out of sync forever. Oh yeah, I wrote that song for Betty. No! I can't believe he said it! I cannot believe he said it! Oh my gosh! It's just, like, right out of the- I have to watch that again. I'm sorry. I have to- I, I gotta rewind it a little bit. I'd rather lose one meaningless year than be out of sync with you maybe forever. See, he realizes that what she just said. Oh yeah, I wrote that song for Betty. I don't understand. Did you guys? We kissed once during Hedwig, but that's it, and we didn't want to hurt you and Jughead. So with my dear cousin, Betty Cooper, Jughead Jones, Veronica Lodge, and Archie Andrews, please join us for the traditional promenade court dance. <laughs> Well, this is awkward. What the hell's going on? What is this? Good song.
jamming out. Come fair, TT. Our carriage is waiting to whisk us back to Thistle House. What's wrong, my sugar plum? What's wrong, my sugar plum? My Nana said that if I didn't get home by midnight that she would never speak to me again. And I hope you can understand. Of course. Tony, go and be with your Nana. And thank you for tonight. I'm sure we'll be able to work it out. She just needs time, okay? I don't want to finish this conversation, Archie. But we have to. Did Betty tell Jughead about what happened between you two? No. Well, we should keep it that way. No need to blow them up, too. No. No, Jughead deserves to know. And I'm not just saying that because I, I don't want Betty and Jughead together. I'm saying that because he deserves to know. So what do we do now? After graduation, we go our separate ways, Archie. No big drama. I'll go to Barnard and... You do whatever feels right to you. That sounds good. I know that I bash Veronica a lot in my Riverdale videos, just because I can't stand her writing and uh, what they did with her character. But she took that very, very well. I must say that. Like, she took it surprisingly well. Something happened between Betty and Archie. The thing is, is that, like, your boyfriend cheating on you is bad enough, but it's- it's with her best friend, too. Don't get me wrong, I want Betty and Archie to be together, but I'm not a robot. Like, I can still acknowledge that this would suck for her. And for Jughead. Gosh, Hiram's gonna kill her. Tonight I realized Tony and I won't end up together. Once again, I'm a victim of this family's curse. I am a boss destined to be alone. Honey. We got an APB out for Honey, David. if Tony moved out to live with her family, you can still end up together, can't you? Who knows anymore? I honestly don't. I don't know how serious this feud is. We got an APB out for David. If he's behind the videos and he is fleeing, it's not gonna get far. Okay, but what if he wasn't the auteur and he was really killed? What do we do? What can we do? Continue our search for David. We'll wait for the next video to drop. Pray that it's not the straw that breaks the camel's back. All right, I don't really know the significance of, of that. I mean, that happened three seasons ago. So I don't really understand how it's like still significant other than to just shake Archie up. I don't know. I'm glad that the cat got out of the bag with Veronica. Uh, she deserved to know and she, she took it very well. I am pretty impressed. <laughs> looking forward to Jughead finding out and also looking forward to the seven year time jump. This is really, really a good chance for them to start over and I hope, I hope that they don't mess it up. I like it when they make Cheryl more sympathetic like she was at the end of the episode. I don't like it when she's just like blurting out a bunch of insults at everybody, especially when most of them don't even really make sense and are unjustified. She's pretty insufferable for the most part, but in this episode she was um, more sympathetic and I do appreciate that. Betty and Jughead for sure had the most boring storyline in this episode. I really don't care what they're doing at this point. I don't care about the videotapes. I don't care who's behind it. I, I don't really care. I just, I don't care. I want to thank you so much for your continued support and participation on this channel. And I hope that I will get more fun videos out soon, whether they be on the Archie Comics characters or something else. Which reminds me, my Archie Comics character essays, I know that it's been a couple of months since I posted my last one, but there are are a few of them in the works. In the near future, I'm planning to still do character essays on Archie, Jughead, Reggie, and Kevin. Not necessarily in that order, but stay tuned for those if you like those videos. But other than that, I don't know what this season is gonna be. I don't know what this show is anymore. I don't think I ever really did. But I hope that you all have a wonderful, amazing day, and thank you so much for watching.